This gripping film, inspired by true events, centers around Tadeusz Teddy Petrakowski, a Polish boxing champion amid the 1940 siege of Warsaw. Teddy finds himself in the heart-wrenching turmoil of the first mass transport to concentration camp Auschwitz. As he stands in line, marked as a Nazi prisoner, Teddy momentarily escapes to the days when he honed his boxing skills in his backyard, but the serenity of his memories is shattered when German soldiers abruptly capture him, condemning him to life in the concentration camp. Here, Teddy, alongside fellow inmates, toils ceaselessly, breaking stones and ferrying them to a nearby hill. The prisoners endure wretched conditions, crammed into cramped quarters and surviving on meager watery soup, insufficient for their grueling labor. Among them is Ionic, a fifteen-year-old boy, frequently tormented for his meager rations. One fateful day, an elderly prisoner dares to share an escape plan. Yet when the Germans discover the scheme, they brutally end his life with a shovel. The next day, Yannick, a young fan who once watched Teddy's boxing matches on TV, approaches Teddy. Their unexpected connection unfolds as Yannick embarks on a perilous journey to a German officer's house to deliver a chair. Engrossed in his labor, Teddy seizes a clandestine moment, slipping into the living room to pilfer a few apples. Later he shares this forbidden treasure with Yannick, a compassionate teenager. The chain of kindness continues as Yannick, in turn, shares his apple with the elderly Eric. Teddy's heart warms, recognizing the innate goodness in Yannick. Tragically, their stolen apples do not go unnoticed by the ever-watchful German soldiers. They descend upon Teddy, spotting Yannick and Eric clutching the pilfered fruit. Without mercy, they haul them away, bound for punishment. In the subsequent scene, the trio finds themselves forcibly marched to a grim execution site. The air is heavy with the stench of despair, as the soldiers summarily execute those who defy their authority. Yannick, Eric, and Teddy bear witness to the recent casualties, three souls who met their tragic end that day. A heart-chilling moment unfolds when a German officer singles out the frail Eric, commanding him to place an apple atop his own head. Trembling with dread, Eric obeys. The officer levels his firearm at the delicate target, and with a deafening blast, he fires, but the outcome is shattering as the shot veers toward a devastating twist in this harrowing tale. It takes a dark turn as tragedy strikes. Eric, the elderly man, meets a swift and gruesome end when a shot fired by the German officer claims his life. The chilling incident leaves Teddy next in line, ordered to replicate Eric's terrifying ordeal. However, Teddy, fueled by an unyielding spirit, defiantly begins munching on his apple. He boldly proclaims his fearlessness, singling out the Nazis for their intimidation tactics. This audacious act enrages the German officer, who turns his fury towards Yannick. Teddy pleads for mercy, but his appeals fall on deaf ears, leaving him tormented by guilt and sleepless nights. Simultaneously, the situation within the camp deteriorates rapidly. A large number of Jewish prisoners are herded into gas chambers, where poisonous gas is used to snuff out their lives. Conditions worsen as prisoners are forced to commence grueling work even before sunrise, suffering brutal assaults and enduring further reductions in their meager rations. Some prisoners succumb to the harsh treatment, collapsing on the spot. Desperation reaches a breaking point when a heartless German soldier throws a morsel of food onto the ground. Starving prisoners, driven to the brink, scramble to snatch the morsel. The sadistic soldier revels in their suffering, tossing more food into the fray and goading them to fight for it. Chaos erupts as prisoners engage in brutal brawls for meager sustenance. Amid this madness, the soldier, spotting Teddy nearby, orders him to join the ruthless contest, further plunging our protagonist into the depths of this brutal nightmare. Given Teddy's background as a boxer before being thrust into this nightmarish existence, he surprisingly prepares himself for the impending fight. To the astonishment of everyone, Teddy showcases unparalleled boxing prowess, outclassing all contenders with his exceptional tactics. Among the onlookers is a German officer who, having also practiced boxing, finds himself unnerved by Teddy's skill. He dares to challenge Teddy to a duel, and our courageous protagonist readily accepts. The match unfolds with the prevailing belief that the German officer will emerge victorious. However, Teddy defies expectations, landing a powerful blow on his opponent, securing both victory and the respect of the German officer. In recognition of his triumph, Teddy is rewarded with proper sustenance. Later, Teddy selflessly shares his newfound bounty with his fellow prisoners, particularly young Yannick, whom he has taken under his wing. However, the prisoners' dire living conditions have taken a toll on Yannick, 
as a simple cold has evolved into a severe fever and eventually pneumonia. Faced with Yannick's deteriorating health and feeling helpless, Teddy decides to leverage his boxing skills and experience for a noble cause. He approaches the German officer who had challenged him earlier, pleading for assistance. The officer agrees, but under the condition that Teddy complies with his requests. Our hero, with a worried countenance, reluctantly consents. Subsequently, the German officer escorts Teddy to his superiors, informing them of Teddy's exceptional fighting abilities. The superiors, seeking entertainment in their grim surroundings, contemplate what role Teddy might play in their plans. Within the confines of the Grim Camp, Teddy proposes a novel idea to his captors, organizing a boxing championship. Initially, the camp superiors scoff at the notion, doubting that the seemingly frail and emaciated Teddy could land a punch, let alone compete. However, as Teddy showcases his impressive boxing skills with a few well-executed moves, a perceptive Nazi officer quickly recognizes his potential as a formidable fighter. The officer strikes a deal with Teddy. He'll fight for the amusement of the officers, and for each victory, Teddy will receive additional food and water, essential lifelines in this hellish place. The following day, Teddy prepares for his inaugural match in the camp. To the astonishment of many German officers in the audience, Teddy easily dispatches his opponent in the ring. Among the onlookers is a small German child, thrilled by Teddy's prowess. Teddy's victory earns him not only some much-needed sustenance, but also a change in his working conditions, as he is assigned to a horse stable, offering him both rest and an opportunity to hone his boxing skills with newly acquired gloves. Unlike other prisoners, Teddy is granted access to the infirmary, where he seeks treatment for the stitches he incurred during his earlier match. After the procedure, he approaches the compassionate nurse, requesting medication for pneumonia. Recognizing his dire need, she provides the medicine without hesitation, even offering additional medication to assist his fellow prisoners in their times of suffering. In this dark and desperate place, small acts of kindness and Teddy's resilience begin to shed a glimmer of hope. After obtaining the medication for pneumonia, Teddy makes his way to the sick ward. There, he delivers the life-saving medicine to Yannick, who has been suffering from the illness. He also entrusts the remaining medication to a healthcare worker, ensuring that other ailing prisoners have a chance at recovery. Over time, Yannick's health gradually improves, thanks to Teddy's care and the medication. Teddy goes a step further by arranging for Yannick to be transferred to the hospital, sparing him from grueling hours of labor and facilitating a speedier recovery. Within the hospital walls, Yannick's fortunes take an unexpected turn as he crosses paths with a young girl of his age. This newfound companionship brings a ray of light into their otherwise bleak lives. In stark contrast, the conditions for many other prisoners in the camp deteriorate further. They endure inhumane treatment, stripped of their humanity. Each day, hundreds are herded into gas chambers and mercilessly slaughtered. Teddy remains a symbol of defiance and hope, defeating opponent after opponent in the boxing ring. With each victory, he not only secures his resilience, but also kindles a spark of hope that burns in the hearts of every prisoner at Auschwitz. His indomitable spirit continues to inspire, even in the darkest of times. Teddy's selflessness shines as he continues to share his hard-earned rewards with his fellow prisoners, even procuring medicine for the ailing. While the German officers relish the spectacle of Teddy's boxing matches, they grow weary of his consistent victories. A high-ranking officer pays a visit to the stable one day, explaining that despite their enjoyment, there will come a time when Teddy must return to his former labor. The next day, the Nazis introduced a formidable adversary from another prison, hoping to break Teddy's winning streak. During the match, Teddy absorbs a series of punishing blows from his significantly bulkier opponent. Yet our resourceful boxer demonstrates his championship medal, employing sly tactics to outwit his adversary and ultimately secure victory. Teddy's triumph results in greater rewards, which he, in his customary fashion, shares generously with his fellow inmates. Meanwhile, the young boy who once delighted in watching Teddy's matches falls ill and is diagnosed with typhoid. Tragically, it's revealed that he is the son of a high-ranking German general. The child succumbs to the disease, leaving the general heartbroken, a stark contrast to the emotions he felt when he had condemned Jewish children to the gas chambers. As Teddy watches lifeless bodies being transported outside the camp gates, he grapples with an overwhelming sense of guilt, especially upon seeing the lifeless form of his recently vanquished opponent. That night, the German soldiers, led by an officer with a sinister agenda, set a new and ominous series of events into motion. 
Amid the grim surroundings, the general orchestrates another cruel act, rounding up a group of prisoners and commanding them to form a line. They are instructed to undress, believing it's for a bath in the chamber. Unbeknownst to them, the Nazis are deceitfully leading them to their deaths in the gas chamber, using pretenses to ensure compliance. Meanwhile, Yannick's friend is caught stealing food and is hauled outside as punishment. A soldier aims his gun, ready to end her life, but in a desperate struggle the girl wrests the weapon from him, fatally shooting him instead. The ensuing chaos sees another soldier reacting in a fit of rage, gunning down the girl and all the prisoners intended for the gas chambers. In the turmoil, the general is wounded in the hand and taken to the infirmary. Yannick is devastated upon learning of his friend's tragic demise and finds solace in Teddy's embrace. However, when the general, aware of Yannick's connection to the deceased girl, spots him, he subjects the young boy to torment and takes him into his custody. News of Yannick's dire situation reaches Teddy, and the following morning he takes a bold step. He pleads with the officers, desperately trying to secure Yannick's freedom. However, his pleas fall on deaf ears. Teddy, undeterred, offers a daring proposition. If he can defeat the best German boxer in a match, Yannick will be released. The officers, unwilling to grant an easy resolution, impose a challenging condition. Teddy must first face a series of soldiers, one after the other, before finally dueling with the best boxer. Though initially apprehensive, our hero contemplates the weight of the situation and ultimately accepts the formidable challenge. The next day, the match unfolds as per the agreement. Teddy squares off against a succession of soldiers, demonstrating unyielding determination and unrivaled resolve. With each bout, he defeats his opponents, regardless of their background, one by one, knocking them out cold. Teddy's unwavering spirit is a beacon of hope in a place filled with darkness and despair. Teddy steps into the ring to face the formidable German boxer. His opponent exudes strength and toughness, yet Teddy manages to land some impressive blows, momentarily leaving the Germans astonished. They are humiliated that a mere prisoner is outshining their own. In an attempt to regain control, the Germans resort to foul play. They force Teddy to drink a mysterious liquid that quickly takes its toll. In the second round, he begins to feel dizzy and unsteady on his feet. Despite his deteriorating condition, Teddy summons all his remaining strength to stand and defend himself. The Germans, unwilling to accept defeat, prematurely declare their boxer the victor. Teddy vehemently protests, but his efforts fall on deaf ears. Moments later, Yannick, bearing the physical toll of continuous torture, is unceremoniously thrown before Teddy. The general, showing no mercy, demands that Teddy fight the frail teenager. Teddy, with unwavering principles, refuses to harm the boy. In response, the general callously opens fire, ending Yannick's life right before Teddy's eyes. Our hero is left bound to a pole throughout the night as part of his punishment. The following day, Teddy manages to free himself and heads to the area where the deceased are cremated. There, he searches for Yannick's remains and discovers a small toy that once belonged to the young boy. Grief-stricken, Teddy takes a moment to mourn his friend, before mustering the courage to fight once more. In the next scene, Teddy re-enters the boxing ring, ready to face the best German boxer once again. Despite the unimaginable hardship and heartbreak he has endured, he stands as a symbol of resilience and unwavering determination, ready to face whatever challenges lie ahead. In a surprising turn of events, Teddy finds himself in confrontations with fellow prisoners day after day. To everyone's astonishment, he challenges a German soldier to a duel, and the soldier, undaunted, promptly accepts. The duel unfolds, and Teddy initially absorbs a couple of blows. However, he swiftly regains his composure, responding with a series of precise punches. When the opponent eventually exhausts himself, Teddy delivers a resounding blow, emerging victorious. The onlookers are deeply impressed, cheering loudly and bestowing upon him the title of champion. In the wake of this triumph, Teddy is granted his freedom, no longer a prisoner. The final scene of the movie paints a heartwarming picture as our champion boxer returns to his beloved hometown of Warsaw, Poland. There, he fulfills his dream by establishing a gym, where he imparts his boxing expertise to the eager neighborhood kids. Teddy's journey comes full circle as he dedicates himself to nurturing the next generation of aspiring boxers, ensuring that the spirit of resilience and determination lives on in the hearts of his community.